There's lives. Hello, peoples. Hi, peoples. How are we? Pe Jan is looking very excited, excited, excitable there. How are we, everybody? Ever figure out what the deal was yesterday? Local server issue? Don't know, perceptual. Um, I don't know what the issue was yesterday. Um, it was very strange. It may have been the ingest server. Oh, you're not losing your favourite stream series, Perceptual Lucidity. Don't worry, uh, we'll be back. Uh, we'll be back shortly. Well, certainly the course will be back shortly. Yeah, the stream series will be back, provided that Sam wants to continue that streaming lark. I think he will, but I don't think he'll stream as much as I do. So let's talk about um, GD Script for C Sharp developers today. Help you use C Sharp people. By the way, I'm downloading rapidly in the background here. Um, Human full flat, made in one, by one person in Unity. I don't know how it's doing. It's most of the way down. So we're going to be playing that as a team on the hour. So less than an hour to go. Um, and we'll be having a play. Hey, Bulvi. Hey, Perceptual. I like your, your icons there. How are you doing, Yen? I'm very shiny, mate. It's uh, slowly cooling down in this office, which is nice. It's kicking off my allergies. Uh, getting some great work done on Heistmeisters, which is I've been looking forward to making the videos for a while now. Um, yeah, course is coming together really well. Looking forward to playing Human Fall Flat. I'm in a good mood. I have my coffee because I realized I didn't have enough today. I was getting a headache. Awesome. Okay, I'm just going to request help with the, the sun noise. Um, and I then... I can't hear him, for, for the record. You can't. Oh, okay. Well, it's I can. I can. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, so then we'll start looking at this. So I spent the whole day producing videos for... Uh, hey, Heartbeast, uh, Benjamin Anderson, thanks for hosting hey. us. So I spent the whole day looking at um, Godot today which has been yep. funny fun oh i've just upgraded to 3.0.6 and it looks like it hasn't uh, hasn't quite got the idea of my screen scaling so editor settings uh, editor and then a few things we need to do sometimes um sometimes it gets stressed about this high dpi mode as well i've noticed with godot yeah um, so there's a few things that mess it up the other thing that messes it up is if you're not in a high dpi mode um, it can get really upset. So on the Mac, because I'm streaming to Twitch, it gets really upset that, that I'm not in a high DPI. So um, I haven't actually found a solution to that, I don't think. Interesting. Uh, this new version caused problems for me on Windows as well. I had to start running it as administrator because Windows kept saying, oh, do you need to download something from the Windows Store to, to work this? Yeah, so it's, it is struggling with DPI, and I can't run high DPI on this screen the way that I am sharing, but really we're talking about scripts here, so I'm not too worried. Hey, this means that Human Full Flat has, uh, oh no, it doesn't, it, Human Full Flat is nearly finished. So version of Godot is 3.0.6. Uh, let's talk about some some code stuffs. So I could share my screen, yeah, and that will help with the screen let's management. Let's do that. Um, you could see the whole lot, or just Visual Studio Code. Let's try that, see how it goes. Just tidy the screen up for everybody a little bit. Like so, you don't need to see us twice, I don't think, that would be boring. Pop us down in the corner here. Uh, keep an eye on the chat and we'll see, that's the tip jar there, so that's tips and, and follows and subscribes. All those of you who are on Twitch Prime subscriptions, remember the people who first followed us probably need to renew your Twitch Prime subscriptions, reuse it, which would be cool sometime soon. I like James's, I've always read that as HIDP, no idea, I didn't see that as high DPI. HIDP. Oh, yeah. The amount of times I've done that, mate. Yeah, it's somewhat strangely uh, capitalized, if I, if I remember right in the end. It is. Um, so, Ben, today was the first day that you've actually yeah. written code for C Sharp for the course, right? I mean, you've been prototyping on Twitch and stuff. How does it feel? Like, going into Godot and C Sharp, is it better, worse, the same? Does it get in your way? Is it well implemented? What's your experience with it? Um, well, it's biased by the fact that I am writing uh, code to import from a JSON file, which is much harder in C Sharp than it would be in Godot. So we could start there. Let's start in the deep end, then we'll go through the base. Uh, actually, let's get people's eyes in. Let's, let's start with the really basics, which is, is cool. what is different about GD Script. So C Sharp, we're all familiar with this stream is for those who know C Sharp. Um, some of the things that you would notice is that you have to specify the access modifier for all methods. You have to specify the return type for all methods. Uh, the code style is that we use this kind of upper camel case like this where the first letter of every word is uh, capitalized. We mm -hmm. have curly braces to mark code blocks, blocks of statements like this. All of our variables need to have a type or um, use var for type inference, uh, but it's still a statically typed language. Still need to know the type at, com at this point while we're writing the code. Um, what else about C Sharp? You have to have uh, semicolons on the end of everything. You know all this, this is C Sharp, but I'm using this to contrast it to GD Script. So, GD Script, very much like Python. 
First thing, um, you can use var, but you wouldn't better use var in an instance variable in C sharp. Now, these aren't strictly instance variables, but, well, uh, let's not go into the detail of that because in Python, they wouldn't strictly be the instance variables. Here, we're extending node 2D. It's not Python. It's GD scripts, a bit like Python. They do act like instance variables. In C sharp, you wouldn't be able to, uh, to do type inference here. And in GD script, you generally don't need to say what the type of your variables are. You never need to say what the type of your variables are. And furthermore, they can change at runtime, which is really confusing um, for people. So note there's no curly braces. Uh, note that the indentation matters in this language. So that is different to that, um, particularly matters with loops. So this if statement here is even if I try and outdent that line 32, it's not even valid. So forced indentation, which I quite like, I think that's quite a good thing, forces the structure of your code. Um, dynamic typing. So uh, w in the case of GDScript, when we go and, for instance, get stuff from a JSON file, uh, all the types are just transparent. You just can't, you can't see what the types are. You don't worry about the types. You just kind of make a new file, read the file, go and get the text in whatever format you want, parse it out into some data object, whatever type that might be, and then close the file and return the data. And then you can call it in two places. You can call it here, and you can be filling, um, filling up a variable called strings with the data. Now, in this particular case, other strings.json is this. It's just a array or a list. But then immediately later, you can come and do exactly the same method call with stories.json, put it in this thing called stories, and now you've got a completely different data structure. Stories is different. Stories is a, an array of dictionaries. Yep. And the dictionaries are even a little complicated. You're going from string to a list of strings inside the dictionary. It's an array of dictionary of, of arrays is what it is. Yeah, which is super confusing. Um, but you don't have to worry about it in GDScript. The same, the same code, that code does all the same stuff. So that's cool. So the, the big strength is dynamic typing when you're doing that type of thing. The big disadvantage of dynamic typing is when I want to come and do a refactor or rename, you can't be sure when I change all occurrences of stories, I cannot know for sure that that's all that's going to change. Um, right. I would be very worried about changing certain things because it's actually really just doing a textual find and replace. It doesn't have the type information to rely on. So, to me, the difference feels like GD script is a little more flexible, but less resilient. Is that fair? Yeah, I mean, and, you know, anti-fragility, the idea that something gets better when things go wrong can be a good paradigm. Sure. Um, I like the... I like, the, I, I like the simplicity and the cleanliness of it in general. And certainly when we're dealing with, um, when we're dealing with something like a, a JSON file, it's much, much easier. If I show you briefly, by contrast, this is me obsessively spreading things out. If I show you, uh, by contrast, what you have to do in uh, C Sharp, firstly, you have to, for instance, for our story, which relates prompts, lists of strings of prompts to a story like this. So this is the story, once upon a time, a something, a name, ate a something else, a thing, and felt very feeling, etc. So there's the story, here's the prompts. You see in C Sharp, I've got to explicitly create a struct or something that relates the list of strings to the string for a start. Um, and then when I actually go and try and read that JSON file, it's a lot more complicated. So we've got a, um, you know, you've got to break it down into getting a JSON parse result and checking for errors and stuff. And, and then from there, you have to, depending on the type of the thing, if you're setting the strings, then you go through all the objects in that parse result and you start messing around with the, you know, the keys of dictionaries and casting things to strings and all the rest of it. Um, same thing if you're trying to get your prompts, which are, which are these things here, you know, these feelings, yeah. things, names. You've got to mess around in a very similar way um, going through the data structure. So you just don't have to worry about any of that in GGScript, which is nice. Yep. And it kind of reminds me of a conversation we were having just before you went to the States, um, where you were looking both at this and at Hoppy Days, and you're about to start prototyping a C-sharp for Hoppy Days. And it occurred to us that we were getting ourselves into a bit of a pickle, because what was happening is you were taking my script and converting my script into C-sharp, whereas you'd never really do that in the real world, right? You'd rewrite the solution. And so we came up with the idea that going forward, instead of taking the script, like here, Looney Lips is so simple, it's, it's basically one script. But going forward, you won't translate the script into C Sharp, you translate the game. Yeah. Yeah, that's a better way for us to look at things. So Brian's bringing, I actually say this in one of the slides of the course, um, that we're not using any external libraries or any clever business in order to deal with this JSON. We could make our life a lot easier in the C Sharp if we did use a, a library. I just wanted to, to highlight the difference in the native language yeah. between the two. So it's looking good. <laughs> Twitch dog says, uh, don't get me on the rock, paper, scissors with game engines again. No, yeah. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to say the normal thing that I say. Well, do we've I got prefer... some questions. 
And do I prefer Godot or Unity? Um, well, I've got a lot of history with Unity, so I'm naturally going to say Unity. But um, for simple projects like the ones we're building in the Godot course at the moment, uh, and not just simple, but they, I mean, like Heismeisters isn't particularly simple. No. Uh, it's, coming, it's a really quite a detailed little project, but it's for that type of project, and it's difficult to specify precisely what that means, but it really feels like Godot fits nicely. And you have to have a bit of experience with both engines to know what feels like it's a good fit. So that's always my, my, uh, my, my, my mention. So I'm going to make some, make some specific, uh, call out some specific differences in the code in a minute, but I'll just answer another couple of questions. What's the next question? What's Keith got to say? Uh, do, 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 I lost it. Come back. Uh, do, do, do. What is human fall flat? That's been answered. Uh, one that's come up a couple of times. It's not really relevant, but it's been on Discord twice and it's been in here twice. Why do I always get argument exception when I open Unity? Ben, any idea? Why do we always get... Sorry, I need to just try. Can you guys on the stream hear my son? Um, that'd be interesting to hear because it's a bit noisy. One second. No, we can't. Just going to see if we can move. They can't hear. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, uh, oh, this they did, question. but not very loud. So, what's the question about Unity? It's um, very I quick. Didn't... This person always gets argument exception when they open Unity. Any thoughts? No. Sorry, a bit off topic for this stream, lazy chair. Not yeah. sure. I would say, though, go uh, go ask in uh, hash Unity on our Discord server. I'll give you the link there. I've already sent them there. Yeah, um, and you can also uh, write your question down in our community site and then... Um, you know, screenshots of what's going on, etc., and then go and paste that in the forum. Yeah. And then, you know, you've thought about it, you've written it out, you've done your own Google research, and then people will try and help you live. So that Keith helps. says, is there any point in coding getters and setters in singletons in GDScript, as there doesn't seem to be the, seem to be the concept of private variable in GDScript? We actually had a very long conversation about this the other day. Um, ben, what are your views on putting getters and setters to restrict what methods can call things from other scripts. Well, that's the way when you're object oriented, right? We, we, we expose, um, expose behavior, but hide data. So you expect to do that. Mm -hmm. um, in GDScript, we, as we say, you don't have these opportunities to hide this stuff. So you sometimes they use underscores in their methods to say, hey, don't call this yourself or don't change this yourself. But they're just weak conventions. Um, but there is a facility in GDScript, Yam, which Yes, you, you setters and getters. So I can use set get. And yeah. what that'll do is, if someone else tries to set this variable, do this. And if someone else tries to get this variable, do this. You can say, okay, you can do this, just also do this. Or you can send them to a different function where it just returns an error. And they know you can't do this from here. Something has tried to change this. Um, I know that for me, because I'm a lot more au fait with Godot and GDScript than I am with C Sharp and C++ and static languages, it's a thing that's nice to do, but I don't tend to get too worried about it. But I have to be very careful that I don't expose my entire code so everything is calling everything else, because that makes debugging a nightmare, right? If something suddenly goes wrong and everything is being called from random scripts, there is no way to, to easily debug that. Uh, ben, what are your thoughts on that? Should we do it if we don't have to? Well, not if it clutters the syntax. I mean, I would say let's do what we're doing, what we're already choosing to do in the course. Um, one thing that's very powerful is habits. Once you've got into certain habits, they can prevent you, not formally prevent you, but keep you out of trouble, prevent you from doing this because you're just not in the habit of trying to do that. So with signals, with groups, with some of the other facilities that we've got in Godot, which we'll learn about in the course, um, then you don't, you don't find yourself trying to reach into the private variables of other classes so much. Right. It's less necessary, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, Ideally, we would protect against it, but that's just not how, how it rolls here. Yeah. So I think what I'll do, just check. Uh, no, okay, we're good on the chat. Let's just talk about this a little bit more. So um, if you start a new script, it's very clean. Instead of like uh, in C Sharp, you would, well, let's show you the C Sharp. Uh, we would be uh, using namespaces. Well, some of these are in uh, implicit in Godot anyway, in GD script. You don't need to be importing, obviously, a C sharp system or system collections generic Godot. Again, it's already part of GD script, so you don't have to do any of that. Where you inherit from Node 2D here, you know, you've got public class Looneylips inherits from Node 2D. You've got to know what that means. In GD script, you're just saying extends Node 2D, which is the equivalent of inheriting from it. Um, so, and then we've, got, um, then we've got things like this. So we're declaring these variables. Player words is just an array 
current mm. story, we don't even know what the type of that current story is. We don't even worry about what the type of the current story is. We're just declaring it as available throughout all of these functions. We are duck no typing. Going on on the end. What's that? We are duck typing. Mm. If it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, treat it like a duck. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, and we're not putting the name, the type of the uh, variable in its name. We're just flowing with it and saying, well, we don't even know what type this is going to be yet. So you have to let go of knowing what the type is. The Unless type you type. need to, like you'll see variable player words, we're actually defining that as a, um, as an array because we're going to set functions that relate to arrays before we set values. So it just needs to know this is an array. So you yeah. can say this is this type of variable, but you don't need to. Yeah. So for example, here we're doing an append straight off or we're doing a dot size operation on it. So those things need to, it needs to have a type in order to do those. Cool, good interjection, Yen. Thank you. So your equivalent of uh, start is ready here in Godot. So the, the message that gets called by the engine on all these, all these nodes is ready like this. It's an underscore, that's just their convention. It's saying that it's an internal method that you wouldn't normally call yourself, although you could. Mm -hmm. um, and then we just go through and call our helper methods uh, and our lines of code. Now, Yen, do you want to explain what this hash, this uh, dollar blackboard stuff is? What's that all about? Yes. So dollar is a shortcut. Uh, you could write uh, get underscore node brackets and then the string reference to the node, right? But you, you end up doing that quite a lot. So dollar is just a shortcut for get underscore node. That's all it is. So what we're telling it is the value of story text, which is a node within Blackboard, is a child of Blackboard. So it's Blackboard story text dot text. That's the property of story text equals the strings in, equal, in intro text. So we're just setting that value from here. Um, so we're going. A, yeah. So we are the script where the context we're in is the script is on Looney Lips here. We're looking into this Blackboard node and then we're looking for this story text down there. That's what that's doing. Yeah. And it's, it's important because uh, the story text node is its own node, but it doesn't have a script. So we can set those values of nodes from here. So for me, nodes are a bit like very intelligent Legos and you can put scripts on top of them, but if they don't have a script, they still have functionality that you can affect from other scripts. Yeah, one thing we get a lot in GDScript though in Godot is we're having to string reference the name of these nodes. Yep. But that's okay, that's a file, I, I'll forgive that, although I'd still rather bind the asset in the editor somehow. And you probably could in, in Godot somehow by exporting to the inspector. You and doing can, that. but it breaks a lot. And if you export it in the editor, because I did a lot of experimentation with this, you can actually set up a cyclic link. So you're exporting to something else that's calling something else that's calling something else, and it just crashes the engine. So you can, but be careful when you do it. So uh, Bindi's suggesting we put the emotes from this server, from, from um, Twitch here, into the Discord chat server. I don't know. I'm thinking of keeping them uh, exclusive to Twitch. Uh, maybe we could make more effort with some new ones over on Discord. Um, My face has been showing up a lot. Has it? Yeah. We've got your face here. Let's just put it in here oh, good. twice, I think. I haven't would seen my face, face in a while. <laughs> Okay, so then when we write our own methods, very similar. Funk is how you start the, the, the definition of a method. Um, the capitalization standard we're taking from Python, so we're going for all lowercase with underscores between um, words. It's just completely different to C sharp. Otherwise, it's very similar, um, apart from instead of opening a pair of curlies, curly braces, you're going for a colon in here, and then you must indent. It is not valid. Thank you very much for the new subscription, Trix TV. Uh, welcome to the channel. So, um, yeah, the, the indent is crucial. Double indent uh, will probably work actually, but you shouldn't do, and you certainly need the single indent. Basically, where you would have a code block defined by curly braces in C sharp, it's actually taking that same meaning from the indentation. And it's really what you're used to. Like if you're like me, the indentation is actually much easier for me to follow than curly brackets, curly braces. Um, for the record, you can do double indentation, but the convention is this is a continuation from the line above. It's not a separate code. So if you need to break a line for readability, you'll double indent the second line. Nice. Okay, so other differences. Other differences are when you parameterize a f m f function, a method, I think I tried to say the words method and function at the same time, which is always difficult, function or feathered. When you uh, parameterize a function, uh, then, <laughs> then you don't need to say again what the type of the parameter is. We're just saying file name. The type will be determined by what you choose to pass in here. In this case, it's probably a string, uh, but you could pass something else in, and the same method will run at a different time at runtime with a different type being passed in. And provided that what you've written still makes sense for that new type, 
it will run without problem. If what you've written does not make sense for the, the new type that you didn't expect at runtime, you'll get a runtime error. Right. So now we can put an error checking for that. We just haven't done, which is why that comments there, right? We're, we're, we know that if you, we expand this script so that we could export, import other files, we'd need to put an error check in there. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll say again that we don't need to put semicolons on the end of the lines, which is quite nice. Now your variables are named uh, all lowercase, basically the same as Unity, apart from when you come to separate two words like new text, instead of new capital T for text, it's new underscore again. So same type of paradigm as the method names. The things that do get uppercases in GDScript are classes. So things like file, they're going to get their uppercase. Everything else tends to be lowercase. So what else is different? I'm trying to see anything else that's different here. Um, so you still address uh, arrays in a similar way with square brackets like this. You still have a modulus operator in a very similar way. You just get used to methods uh, being in lowercase. Um, if statements are very similar, if else, very, very similar indeed. Um, I'm not seeing anything else here that's too, too uh, weird, actually. It's relatively easy to adjust to. Has anybody in the chat got any questions about the GD script before we move on to either another project or uh, some other aspect of Godot or GD script for C Sharp developers? Was that to me or to them? Sorry. To them. Oh, yeah. So then I won't answer it. Um, so we, we think we may have a blender, blendery school. Uh, do I know the game? I'm not even going to say it just in case it's uh, something that's um, naughty. I don't know what it's all about. And Either way, um, let's just keep the, the chat nice and chilled, folks. We don't have to get each other's throats. Everything is fine. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't really know. I don't know if that's a genuine game or, or what it is. So anyway, if uh, if anybody is, uh, we have some mods on here. So if any of you guys, you know, have any problems with anybody, then we'll, we can always. I'm a mod. Not to be here. But uh, I no, no, I'm not suggesting we get rid of you. Yeah, I, yeah, you're I just, fine. <laughs> you're doing fine. And welcome to the stream. It's cool. I have no idea whether that's a valid game or what, but I'm just seeing the, the chat run by. And we're I talk about Godot anyway. Yeah, exactly. And we're talking about Godot. So, uh, Trix TV, slightly off topic. Do you know when the next <laughs> section of the Unity 2 D course will be updated to 2018? Uh, very soon, Trix. Uh, I know that Rick has finished Block Breaker, and I think he's into the next section, Laser Defender, uh, now-ish. So, if that's what you're asking, then that's that. Let me give you guys the link to the Unity 2 D course, well, as you're asking. Um, I am super tired, by the way. Uh, I have uh, just, my jet lag has been setting in from moving back from America um, in the last few days. So, um, yeah, if I start talking completely incoherently, then oh, you probably won't notice. So I'm tempted to crack open another project just to see if we can eke out any other differences with well, GD script. Just before we do, um, going back a little bit, you were talking about um, this is really good for these kind of simple and not so simple projects. If you actually look at, I can give you the link if you're interested, the demo for the new 3D rendering that's in 3.0 and the change coming in 3.1, you can actually do some pretty good 3D stuff. People have been asking, what's what's it like with 3D? There are actually quite a lot of very fancy effects and a lot of great graphics and, and so on. It's just people haven't had a chance to yet. And I think we will get into the higher end, I mean, not AAA, but higher end graphics later in the course. Um, but yeah, it's totally doable. If you guys are interested in making 3D, Godot is an option. Uh, if you're interested for that, Ben, I can send you the link. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're going to get into 3D later in the Godot course. So, and that launches next week, guys. So keep an eye out for that. He leaked it. Oh. He leaked it. <laughs> he what? We haven't told him the date yet. I leaked it. Right. <laughs> next week. Next week is the date. So uh, Jan has shared a video with you in the chat there. Do take a look at that. I won't do that uh, right now. So, um, Bryant, uh, for Unity and Unreal, straight out the box, the 3D rendering is slightly prettier than Unity's default settings out the box yeah. and similar to Unreal. Of course, with you know, huge teams and the resources, you can get more out of Unreal and Unity probably. Um, but whether you'll get the, the visual fidelity as quickly as you will with Godot, um, I doubt it. It's very suited to the small, very small, very, very small team. So. Yeah, um, there's quite a lot you can do. You just have to work around the fact that you can't use licensed um, file types, licensed programs out of the box. So if you want to use MP3s or FBXs or any of this other stuff that you will take for granted in something like Unity where it is licensed, you'll have to do a little bit more work to get those in. Not a ton more, but a little bit more. Uh, awesome. So 
Um, I'm going to ask the Keith's question in a moment, I think. Or yeah, you for... could while I pull up Visual Studio Code. Sure. I wanna, well, Visual I wanna... Studio Code. Uh, Keith asks, um, how do you decide what type of node to use as a root node? E.g., in the GUI, do you use a control, container, panel, etc. as a root node? For those of you who don't know, the way the scenes work in Godot is that every scene isn't necessarily a place, it's an element in your game, right? So a scene could be an object, it could be a location, it could be a character, it could be the GUI, it could be a special effect, and you can edit them separately. Um, how do I select what's going to be a root node? What do I need as functionality at root and nothing more? So I'll take the simplest necessary thing. So in a GUI, I need something like a control node because I know the control doesn't inherit position from its parent. And with the GUI, I don't want it moving around the screen. So I'm going to just go with a very basic control node. If I need the root node to have a little more functionality, then I'll start going down the tree. Um, keep it as simple as possible at root. I tend to use Node rather than Node2D. I'm, I'm trying to go a bit more towards Node2D if I need positional information. OK, there you go. So it's going to be a question of uh, getting a taste for it the more you do. So I want to talk briefly about uh, Visual Studio Code, because I've been encouraged into Visual Studio Code by uh, GD Script. So I kind of refused to use Godot's internal editor, mainly because Yam was using that, and I wanted to give a new flavor in the <laughs> course. It's cool. Um, and also because Visual Studio Code is actually now the world's uh, most... Oh, Axe Games, welcome to Tier 3 subscriber, by the way. Two Woo! months as well. We'll be seeing you on the next Meet the Mentor stream, which is next um, Tuesday evening, I believe. So welcome. Thank you for being here. And that now gives Axe, uh, Axel, AKXL, basically, I think is what he's calling himself, Games, the opportunity to come on live on uh, Zoom like Yan is with me now and ask his questions on a stream. So welcome. That's cool. Thank you very much for being here. So um, Visual Studio Code, why did I go for that? It's the most popular uh, IDE in the world now. It's tiny. It's only, I think, 100 and something meg. Um, it's very, very light when you first get it. Out of the box, it supports a whole bunch of languages. One of those is not Godot. So when you find that it does not support GD script, what you do is you come along here and you enable, you find an extension. In fact, it's particularly good. Look at this. If I uninstall the Godot Tools extension and reload Visual Studio Code, this is your life in Visual Studio Code. Look at this. I open up this, uh, this Godot file and you see there's no syntax highlighting. It's calling it a plain text file. It hasn't got a clue. You could try and try and format it as Python if you like, uh, and it'll kind of go completely wrong because it isn't Python, right? So, but what you'll notice that it is doing, if I put it back to plain text, is it's saying, hang on, the marketplace has extensions that can help with GD files. Dun, dun, dun. That's quite exciting. So we search the marketplace for anything that helps with the extension GD. And we look at these, and there's one here with 2,500 downloads. There's one here with 21,000 downloads. And this is the one that I'm going to recommend. So by GQuillim. And you just click, quickly click Install. And it's installing an extension in here. You reload Visual um, Studio Code very, very fast. Watch what happens in this GD script file now. Boom. All the syntax highlighting's there. It knows what GD script's all about and actually gives you quite a lot of help with the GD script. You can even get some of the APIs. Uh, you can look in and see you know, all the documentation of that. So pretty cool. Then you have to go to Godot and configure it to use an external editor, which we'll show you how to do in the course. Um, Blender, Blendery School says he'll subscribe if I give him the money. That's not quite how it works, but an interesting concept there. We will give you the money if you give us twice the money. Yeah, That's pyramid it. scheme. I'll tell you what does work is asking Amazon to give you the money. If you've got an Amazon <laughs> Prime account, then you can link that to Twitch and you can use that to subscribe for free. So actually you can subscribe for free. Amazon will pay for you. That's, that's a pretty cool deal. You may have to fiddle around behind the scenes and bash Amazon a little bit, but they will pay for you, which is a good deal. Jeff Bezos can afford it. I think he's got a penny or two. <laughs> So uh, Visual Studio Code is very open, right? It allows you to plug in things. So I've got a C Sharp plugin, which the run I recommend is from Microsoft. It has over 7 million downloads. Um, you can have a Unity debugger if you're using Unity. Um, I was re opening an environment variable file the other day. I wanted it to be formatted. It, come, it came up straight away and said, I can help with that. I said, sure, please do help with that. Um, it doesn't print out the box because it cares about the trees, but sometimes when I'm uh, working on a course, I like to have the code that I'm going to teach printed so that I can cross it through and keep track of my progress. Another extension you can get, Japanese, but you can uh, print in English, mm -hmm. so that's cool, uh, and so on. All right, so there's loads of extensions. There's even something super cool here called VS Live Share, like Google Docs for code. You can actually two people be in the same code file at the same time. So one of the things that um, 
doing both GD Script and C Sharp has encouraged me to do is spend more time in Visual Studio Code is what I'm trying to say, and it is brilliant. It is really quite good. Has version control built in. I can see what files I've modified. I can commit straight from here. I can see the differences. I've got a debugger, which I haven't used very much yet, and so on. So yeah. That um, is, is there there a JSON plugin? Uh, I didn't have to install a plugin when I, when I tried it. JSON just worked out of the box. In fact, I yeah, still JSON, use a JSON. JSON just works out the box, but you'll get loads of other JSON stuff. One of the best, if you're a web dev, by the way, with 358,000 downloads, is paste JSON as code. So if you're going on, a, this is slightly off topic, but if you're going on a website that tells you an API in JSON, you can go and copy that API off the website and paste it straight into here, and it will paste it and reformat it as proper JSON. Why has so, my camera just died again? So that's pretty cool. There's loads of JSON tools in here. You can look through and see whatever you wanted to do, prettifying it, um, all sorts. So that's, yeah, that's good. And version control right in, good search facility, good command palette, control P, brings up anything. If I wanted to find icon, I could find icon there. It does preview icons and things as well. Or at the same time, I could go into settings or, or whatever. Yep. Maybe, maybe. Uh, you mentioned Microsoft very um, briefly there with C Sharp. Uh, little known fact, the reason that C Sharp integration is built into Godot, assuming you download the mono version, is because Microsoft paid for it. They funded it. So as much as people like to bash Microsoft, they do help open source up the projects quite a lot. Mm. They've been a totally different under the new management, really. I can't remember the chap's name. Um, but the new the new Microsoft management is is just better. I think his uh, name is Clippy. To... No, it's not Clippy. <laughs> that's, that's the paper That's the AI paperclip. They uh, Perceptual Lucidity Games. Almost everything I own is JSON stuff. I'm wondering if Perceptual Lucidity's name is JSON. Most of our tier three, well, at one point, three out of two out of no three out of four of our tier three subscribers were all called Jason for whatever reason. I like um, how that whether they were got bigger that, that fast haunting me. Yeah, they, uh, but they were all spelled J A S O N, not J S O N. Um, I, I, got, I had some people complaining that that's how I was pronouncing Jason. It's like that's how that's, I, I learned Jason GUI SQL. That's how I learned. I was working in a software company. I wasn't writing code at the time, but that's what the programmers were calling it. So that's what I picked up. That's it. So I'm going to try and pronounce this. It's Satya Nadella, I think, is this MSC of Satya Nadella. Thanks, it. Awesome. Jan's had a runtime error. I'm sorry for you, Jan. I hope you recover from that. Oh, it wasn't me. Error. It's if Ben gives me money, subscribe equals true, crying equals false, else crying equals true. <laughs> so there is actually a good blog article, which we've included in the course, but it's it'd be remiss of us not to show this oh, right yes. now. Um, if anybody can find the link, Jan might be the first. This is a, a blog article okay. about uh, GD script for C Sharp developers. Uh, I got it right. Open. Where'd you put it? Okay. Send me the link. I've got to get it first. Oh, uh, I can't open. I can't because you saved it in the Godot file as a web lock. <laughs> and you're on ah. Mac and I'm not. So ah, well, I've got, web, I've got web lock Fanangular somewhere. Well, why don't you just go to the Godot file in Resilio? It's not like they can I'll access it. I'll go open it. The Hoppy Days folder. Okay, you guys can see behind the so hop, Hoppy Days. Hoppy Days, do you know where? That's it. Is it? No, that's not it. What are you talking about? It's the next folder. Shut up, Jan. Okay, where is this thing, Jan? Where's this, where's this thing we need to share? There you oh, go. API it's in the Looney Lips. It's in the root of Looney Lips. There you go. And I need to share that. Actually, I need to share that in my next, resources. talking about needing to, and I'm not going to pay lip service to that. I'm going to actually make sure it's shared in my next video. So 17 is the video I'm currently failing to produce. Um, formatting fail. I'm going to put this into its resource links right now Good. so that whatever happens, that ends up in the course. Okay, so here it is. Um, Let's just grab that and paste it in the chat. This is where you want to have a look to see what the differences are. So it's going to talk about the, the fact there's a lot more global scope. It's going to talk about the math differences, the, how we use random. It also could, has a side-by-side -side comparison into a lot of the stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So um, export, export. So this is showing you the difference between, although to be honest, this is the other way around, of course, to, to this title of this stream. The title of this stream is GD script. For C sharp developers, this is really uh, C sharp for GD script. But developers. you can still look at the document. It'll just take a little longer to get the information you want. Yeah, you kind of reverse it in your head, right? Yeah, you start from the bottom and read up. Yeah, and that that would that would do it. So anyway, that gives you a whole bunch of information. The other thing I wanted to bring out uh, or, or uh, highlight about GD script is the comments are different. They're done with hashes, just like Python. 
The, uh, the standard we're working to is double space before it and then single space after and double space before so functions. Um, that's just from uh, PyCharm. PyCharm is a great IDE for Python and it complains a lot if you don't format beautifully. I so didn't we're... know that's what we were doing. None of my comments have double spaces. I'm a terrible teacher. <laughs> it's fine. We'll settle on that. We'll so that's why I'm kind of going through and gently. <laughs> you know, what he's doing is, is tidying up. He's like, yeah. he's like the, all... the maid it's... in the hotel that is my code. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So let's open another project, I think, in the remaining time. We haven't got sure. much remaining. You open a project, and Mike Nolan says, Hi, I'm looking to start developing my own games. Hooray, excellent. You're in the right place. I'm following both Unity and Unreal, but I'm struggling to learn the development first off. How do I start designing and putting what I learn into practice? Are you asking about best practices in code? Are you designing your code, or are you talking about designing your game? Talking about designing your game, um, I actually have a course on this, the Board Game Designer, uh, the Board Game Ninja, whatever it's called, um, which then has a short code for. Uh, okay. it's, it's using board games to teach pure game design theory, right? So if you want to talk about how to make your game as enjoyable as possible, I try and avoid the word fun because it doesn't really mean anything. Um, how to play test, how to build from essential experience, we do that. Um, Long story short, I'm a big believer in starting from player experience. For me, the game is how you want the player to feel. So identify that feeling and build around it. For me, theme is secondary, mechanics is secondary, experience first. If you're talking about best practices with code, watch as many tutorials as you can, read books, and keep everything simple, easy to follow, and easy to read. I think that's fair. What do you think, Ben? Yep, that sounds fair. Cool. Keep moving forward. So Blendery School, interesting chap in the chat here. So a little bit earlier, just 10 minutes earlier, he knew uh, Java, Python, C Sharp, C++, and Boo. And uh, right now he, only, he now only knows C Sharp. So I'm sorry that you forgot all those languages in that short time. That's very unfortunate it's for you. It's been quite <laughs> the stream. But something else could be going on here. Maybe, um, maybe you got carried away, boasted about some languages you don't know so well, and then decided to own up, in which case, thank you for your honesty and for your vulnerability to do that in front of everybody. So if you're apologizing for having slightly overinflated your coding uh, breadth earlier, then that's awesome. That, that's really cool that you've then turned around and said, actually, I'm sorry that I said that. Cool. Um, no, in Godot, you don't need the semicolon at the end. Right. No, you don't need the semicolon. That's the bottom line. Um, I don't understand why Twitch gives me different people names than you, or why they're there twice. Oh, yeah, well, they get different colors screen. as well. I think we get different colors, right? Yeah. Uh, totally not a spam bot. If you need another topic, I'd like to know if you have any experience or advice from making builds from a bash script. M no, not really. Builds of what? Um, builds from bash script from, from where? Sorry, uh, G are you operating within an engine, outside an engine? I don't have any experience build some bash scripts. I'm sure I could work it out pretty quick, but I don't really 100% understand the question. So I'm sure I could work it out a little slower. <laughs> Either way. So what project uh, are you going to open? What's that? What project are you going to open? Another one, a different one. Do and you want to open Heistmeisters and see if you can make sense of it um, in GD script and how you would do some of these things in C Sharp? Or given that we've got a gaming stream in 20 minutes and we have to prepare for it, what we could do mm -hmm. is just end the stream pretty soon after taking a couple of questions and then tantalize them for next time because there's going to be more in this series. Uh, probably the same time next week we'll have the next one of these. I don't okay. see, I just check my diary and make sure that we'll have the next Discovering Godot um, next week. Let's just check, here we go. Is that game going to cost money? Uh, well, you have to buy the course, so yes. Yeah, so we are. We make courses, dude. Um, and uh, the course, uh, all our courses are listed here. And. And the new you can get, I mean, the, the listed price is almost always on massive sale because Udemy has massive sales. Yeah, so you'll get a good deal. Uh, we, yeah, we make courses, we teach you to make games, you go off and make the games. We focus on teaching it. Uh, we will be doing this stream same time next week, yep. uh, just before we play some other game, which is as yet to be under, the, as yet to Monster be. says, what do you mean gaming stream? Ben, what do we mean? Sorry. Well, what I mean like... is we're going to play Human Fall Flat in a minute, so I'm going to crank that up and make sure that it works we can what we'll do is we'll do the cranking process now before uh, live with you guys and then i'll briefly stop the stream and restart it only for a few seconds just to change the stream name basically yeah, so that it goes Friday down night, we've all been working quite hard we want to unwind spend time together as a team and share that with you and talk with you in chat and talk about the game we're going to be playing so that's so, what we're doing to answer your question no we will not be releasing these the reason we're not releasing the games that we teach apart from the unity rpg that is one that we are quite likely to release which is um here 
in, we're going to release it. It's a question as to what, uh, to what extent we release it. Um, the reason we don't is because the amount of content, art content, you need to create to get a game out there is huge. And the repetitiveness of that is, is, makes it hard for us to make the courses interesting. So we, we don't- We have to do it without recording that bit as a course, right? Which means that you now have like, I've released this game. Here's how I did it, which is less interesting. Um, Absolutely. Actually with Heistmeisters, I did feel like I could extend that into a professional game quite easily. I would just have to spend a year of my life doing that and not teaching. So. Okay, so we're going to see how human fall flat. Now this game was made, and, and the, the, this is going to be the subject of the next stream, which is on the hour, but we're just going to get set up now live in front of you guys. So first thing I'm going to do is turn the sound down because I'm very worried um, that we will be drowning us out. Now this was made by one guy. Go to customize. In Udemy. Go to customize. You want to customize Udemy. your character, don't you? I don't know. Is that, is that how it works? Well, do you want to be a, a faceless, featureless man in a hat? I do. Well, then you don't do anything. Okay, I won't. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna not be a faceless, featureless man in a hat. I'm gonna be a purple-headed warrior. I think is what they call it. For the record, we've been friends since we were eight, which is a very long time ago. So that's why we have this weird back and forth. Yes, main, mainly back. <laughs> yes, he doesn't know how to answer. So I'm gonna customize this dude up. He is quite a character, isn't he? <sighs> Colors I'm just gonna leave as they are because I'm a hugely uncreative um, fool. <laughs> Um, cool. Well, that's fine. Uh, do I need to toggle player? Does that? No. No, you just get two. You can switch between. Oh, I see. Cunning. That's what toggling means. Yeah. Look at that. Really nice. Look at, look at the, um, Isn't that... this is, yeah. Look at the, the, the polish here. The polish is just, well, polish so, really. It's interesting because he's released some great content and a lot of people on Twitch have been playing this and people are like, where's all the rest of the content? It's like, I'm one guy. I'm doing it. Yeah, it's really, this is, it's just got a good feel to it. Right, so, Jan, let's try online. Is this going to be online or friends? Which one do you reckon? Uh, well, it's got to be friends. Friends. Otherwise, we're going to okay. get like 40 people jumping in. So we're going to find out if we can do Mac, PC. Oh, am I loading play, this right? up right now? So yeah, have a go. Just, we're going to test it. I wasn't paying attention, I'm sorry. Uh, we'll test it, then we'll restart the stream. Uh, it, Let me go into friends and I'll host a game. Oh. Or oh, unless you want to host a game. Playing. No, no, I'm doing it, I'm trying. Okay, give me a second. Gucci. Sorry, I was just watching the Minions movie. Cool. Yeah. So I'm going to get used to the controls as I've never played this before. Um, press left or right mouse button to reactivate a remote. Really? So um, this is kind of ridiculous. What's going on here? <laughs> is this you over there yet? No, I'm no. not in yet. Uh, play, okay, I just grabbed an instructional friends. video. Hold it tight. Join. Here we come. Now, getting our videos over the top of this is something we probably we don't need to. Do. to. You don't reckon we don't need to? No, we don't need to. I'll see if it's possible. It should be possible. What I should be to do is this, this, um, this, and then, yeah, leave myself down here somewhere. And then get rid of the annoying bar. There we go. Now we should be to go full screen. So, Jan, do you want to, um, do we want to try and get in the same thing? Invite friends? Should I just invite you? I'm already in. I've just you're thrown you off the game I'm in. <laughs> I'm an expert. Oh, is this is this you that I'm hugging? Ooh, yuck! That's disgusting. What do you mean it's disgusting? You this... I'm totally a toucan. Look at my chest. Uh, toucan. You you customized that yourself? Yes. Hey, hey, Yan. Two two can play at this game. Come on. Uh, you see what I did there? Where are we off to? What's this weakness? Ah, uh, you killed me. <laughs> this, is, this is it. This is the end, my friend. Oh, hang on. Oh, that's kind of recursive and weird. I kind of started. Yay! Okay, uh, so what right button happens? Right is for the right hand, left button is left hand. Oh. So you can kind of put, I see, this is a bit like Octodad. They will run into every door. Humans will run into every door they encounter. So this seems to be working, that's cool. Do people on the stream, um, do you guys, can you hear? Can, you can see me clearly, uh, for, whether that, for better or for worse. Uh, but can you, can you hear, I guess is my main question. Excuse me, this is my door. Okay, I'm sorry, Yen. I didn't mean to upset you. Oh, I nearly killed myself. I nearly fell flat. Uh, okay, so you're going over the wall that way. This is... <laughs> what's going on there? You're stuck to the beam. <laughs> so it's very like Octodad in that respect. So you get to... Hold on. So as you press the left or right, you'll um, grab onto things. And these things are remote. They'll teach you how to play. Can you climb? No. <laughs> ah. That's the main okay, puzzle. So there's a remote over here if you need to learn stuff. So how do you like bend over to push both Look these down. buttons then? 
What's that? Look, wait, wherever you're pointing, that's where your hand will go. Aha. Uh -huh. You missed a button. Oh. Get me off my hand. Okay, let's go. This is ridiculous. I like this. Um, Good game, is there any, uh, He seems to be, is he having a pee in the fountain? Yep. He looks like he's having a pee in the fountain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is perfectly ridiculous. So you obviously have more dexterity with it. Oh, there's a jump button. Well, Mikey and I were practicing. Ah. I'm stuck. Well, I, can't, I currently can't climb that fountain. Anyway, so this I'm is human call for, for flat. This is what we're going to be playing in a minute. Yeah. Awesome. So it's working. Uh, and the other guys should be dialing in with us. Now, so... quick question, folks. Do you want me to be the totally legit toucan that I am right now, or do you want me to be the pastel pirate? <laughs> good question. Totally legit toucan or pastel pirate? That's a good question. I'm going to turn my, my camera brightness down a little bit. I'm going to try and drop out of game for a minute. Um, it would be a good VR game. If I focus, I can get a Yan echo, but no sound would be subtle. I don't know. There is sound, not from the game. Is, is, the, is, is the game sound like non-existent? Yeah. Is that what we're hearing? Pirate. Uh, both of us have sound very low in the game. Yeah, okay. I can, I can turn it up. Yeah, I wouldn't mind some more. I have an echo. You do. That might just be coming through my mic. I can I do something might about be. that. Because I don't normally have an echo. Is, is there a significant amount of sound in the game? It's not sounding like there is. Yeah, this is a great soundtrack. Really? What music type soundtrack? What other soundtrack would you be expecting? I don't know, really. Just a, a, another type of soundtrack. <laughs> really? Name another type of soundtrack. Well, like the, the, the UGG sounds soundtrack. <laughs> That's not a soundtrack. Okay, that's sound effects, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's the weekend. <laughs> okay, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to... Uh, <laughs> go to the bathroom. We're going to go to the bathroom, have a quick break. We'll be back on uh, streaming in about five minutes or so, back, and we'll, we'll have a go on this game. So and we're expecting the... more people, so there'll be more of a team here. Yeah, the rest of the team should be diving in. So oh, cool. should I just stay here and then continue to invite friends in, I guess, right? So I can invite Mikey, I can invite... One, but do you not want to go to the bathroom? I do. I mean, there's a garden there. Why wouldn't I use that? Because you have five toilets in your house. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess. That's the point. I'm guessing. All right. Cool. So I'm going to end the stream, change its name, start the stream again, leave it on the menu screen like this, and we'll all be in good, uh, good, good hands. So look forward to Human Fall Flat in about five minutes, guys. Folks, we'll thanks for joining day. us. Thanks for taking an interest in Godo. And I can't wait to see more of you in the course that aren't already in there, because the course will be going live next week. And uh, yeah, bye. <laughs> see you guys. Back in just a second. Stay here.